Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Irvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatya Desatari Ne. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Confirmed <laughs> Very old temple, <coughs> especially this back part, seems to be particularly old. They've done some restoration. Some of the figures were <coughs> smashed and they've rebuilt them, not from stone, but from cement, it appears. As remote and quiet a place as this is, the Temple destroyers seem to have found this place too. <laughs> There's some very ancient history connected to the, the temple and the deity, which I'll explain later. <coughs> First, what I'd like to do is um, the yatra that we're taking is following the, the path that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled when he left Puri for his South India tour. And I'd like to describe what's found in Chaitanya Charitamrita in that connection. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami summarizes that in the month of Magh, January, February, is when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas because his birth or his appearance was the full moon night of the month of Halgun, the following month. So just before his 25th birthday, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the sannyas order and then he traveled in the month of Palgun, he traveled to Puri and when in Puri he observed the Doliatra festival. The following month of Chaitra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liberated Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and the following month of Vishaka is when he began his South India tour. That's how Krishna does Kaviraj Goswami presents the topic. After liberating Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, it became a desire, an expressed desire of Lord Chaitanya to travel in South India. <coughs> so he gathered together those same small group of devotees, Lord Nityananda, Jagatananda, uh, Mukunda, and there were, no, well, that's it, there are four. So he, um, Lord Nityananda especially, he appealed to them. He said that you are my very dear devotees. You are so dear to me that I could give up my life, but I can't give up your association. You've been very kind to me, the best of friends. By that friendship, you brought me here to Jagannath Puri, where I could then take darshan of Lord Jagannath. You've all been so kind to me. I'm so much indebted to you. I now have one small charity that I would like to ask of you. My elder brother, Vishvarup, took sannyas when I was very young. And he went somewhere in South India and I'd like to go find him. So with your permission, I'd like to make a tour of South India looking for Vishwarup. And 
I'd like to travel alone and observe my sannyas vows in that way. When I return, you please stay here in Jagannath Puri. When I return from Setu Bandha, <clears throat> I will meet you again. The devotees were very <coughs> sad and sullen and silent. They couldn't, they didn't want him to leave. <laughs> they couldn't say, no, don't go. But they didn't want him to go. Finally, Lord Nityananda broke the silence. He said, what are you saying? <laughs> Traveling alone throughout the whole of South India, how is this going to be possible? Who can tolerate this? You should take at least two of us with you when you travel. You have to carry your danda and your water pot and your clothes and your um, chanting with your beads and counting with your other hand. And how, how is this going to be possible? When you're <clears throat> traveling and you faint in a mood of ecstasy, chanting the holy name, plunderers will come and take all your little <coughs> possessions. Then you'll have nothing. So, take at least two of us. And if you order me, I'll gladly go. I know the way. I've traveled in South India already. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I'm simply a dancer, and you're the puppeteer, you're pulling the strings, and I just dance however you like. Then he said something quite different. He said, Nityananda, when I took sannyas, I desired to go to Vrindavan. And by your tricks, instead I went to the house of Advaitacharya. <laughs> and then when we were traveling from Navadweep to Puri, I entrusted you with my danda. And you broke it or you lost it or whatever you did with it and now I don't have a danda anymore. Being with you, it's just disturbing to my activities. <laughs> and Jagatananda, he wants, to me, he wants me to enjoy sense gratification. <laughs> and out of fear, I do whatever he wants me to do. If I do something against his desire, he becomes angry with me and he won't talk with me for three days. Being a sannyasi, it's my duty to lie on the floor, eat very simply, take a bath three times a day, even in the winter. And when I do such things, Mukunda becomes very unhappy. He doesn't say anything. But I know what his feelings are. And when I see Mukunda unhappy, then I become twice as unhappy. And as far as Damodar is concerned, he's, he's a brahmachari, and I'm a sannyasi, and he stands with a stick in his hand, ready to instruct me about how to behave in social matters. He thinks I'm just a young boy, and I don't know how to behave myself properly. <laughs> Damodar Pandit and others are more advanced in receiving the mercy of Lord Krishna, They've, therefore, they're independent of public opinion, but I'm a sannyasi. It's my duty to observe vows very strictly. And when I do so, they become very unhappy, all of you, my associates. I want to observe the sannyas standards of renunciation in the course of my travels, and I can't take any one of you with me. Please allow me to go alone. And I'll come back in due course of time. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains, Lord Chaitanya, by speaking words of criticism, was actually speaking words of glorification. <laughs> the very wonderful qualities of his devotees, the loving devotional service qualities of his devotees. But the internal mood of Lord Chaitanya was he desired 
to exhibit very strictly the standards of the sannyas order. But because of love that he felt for his devotees, when they found difficulty in his doing so, that made him unhappy and he wanted to be free to perform his sannyas duties. And so, and the plea of their bad qualities, he was expressing his desire to travel alone. The devotees remained silent. And then Nityananda spoke again <laughs> and said, at least take one devotee. With one hand, repeated, one hand you're chanting japa, the other hand you're counting your rounds. Where are you going to carry your water pot? Where are you going to carry your, your extra garments? And there's many dacoits in the, in the course of travel. Anything can happen to you. Please. One simple brahmachari, he'll say nothing. He'll just carry your items and serve you. There's one young brahmachari, Krishna Das. Take him with you, and then we'll be happy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed. And together, the four plus Lord Chaitanya went to the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya where Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was <coughs> requested by Lord Chaitanya to give his blessings for his journey in South India. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was stunned when he heard Lord Chaitanya's appeal. He's, he, in a very agitated state of mind, said, for so many lifetimes I've been engaged in mundane affairs and mundane speculation and somehow by some great fortune perhaps some accumulated pious past deeds or whatever the cause finally I've gotten your association and you've freed me from this worldly existence and now I'm going to lose your association? How unfortunate! What an unthinkable event! You're the independent, supreme personality of Godhead. You can do whatever you wish. I just have this request that you may please stay in Puri for another few days. Stay in my home and let my wife and I feed you prasad. So Lord Chaitanya accepted his appeal. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and his wife She's known as Sati Mata, the mother of Sati, the one who Sarvavam Bhattacharya wished that she would become widowed. Amoga, her husband, was offending Lord Chaitanya. So he stayed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained in the house of Sarvavam Bhattacharya for five days. Very liberal, because his request was a few. And after five days, Lord Chaitanya announced, now it is time for me to go. He then went to take permission from Lord Jagannath. And from Lord Jagannath, um, a garland was brought by the Pujari and placed around the head of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya accepted that as the blessing of Lord Jagannath. So, after offering obeisances, he began his journey. Um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya requested his brother-in-law, Gopinath Acharya, <coughs> to bring what he had prepared, four sets of clothes and some um, other items to carry with him, and then saw Lord Chaitanya and requested him one final thing. When you travel, please be sure to visit Ramananda Roy. You'll find him near the banks of the Godavari River, and he is a extremely qualified Vaishnav in the science of devotional mellows. 
please don't neglect him, thinking him to be a worldly person because he's the governor of, under the king of King Pratapurudra. And don't think of him in terms of his bodily caste. He's in the Shudra caste. Please know that he's a fit person to associate with you. Previously, when I had met Ramananda Roy, I would laugh at him because I thought he was just this sentimentalist devotee. But by your mercy, I've come to understand the supremacy of devotional service. And now I only can I, by your mercy, can I understand how qualified is Ramananda Roy. Please see him in the course of your travel and you'll be very happy to have his association. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the request of Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and Lord Chaitanya embraced Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and bid him farewell. As Lord Chaitanya left, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya fell to the ground unconscious. Lord Nityananda picked him up and carried him back to his home. But Lord Chaitanya, exhibiting this mood of renunciation, the description is there that very elevated Vaishnavas exhibit both of these qualities. Sometimes they're soft as a rose and sometimes they're harder than a thunderbolt. So without heeding his dear devotee, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, feeling so much separation that he lost consciousness, he left Jagannath Puri. And his first place of travel was to Alalanath. That was the first night's stay. Actually, he reached there early in the morning and he saw the deity of Alalanath. And seeing the deity of Alalanath, this, is, this was his first darshan, because later he would go back again and again during each of the um, periods after uh, the bathing of Jagannath, and Jagannath would go into seclusion. So he saw the deity of Alalanath, and he began dancing, and the devotees began chanting. There was a large group of devotees, and as they were chanting and dancing, the people from all over the place came. And by the hundreds and the hundreds, and by midday was by the thousands of people came to see this amazing performance of Lord Chaitanya's chanting and dancing. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that somehow Lord Nityananda thought of some tricks to disperse the crowd so they could stop and have lunch. The Pujaris brought prasad of Alalanath, Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, with his giving his benediction hand like this. And <clears throat> they took prasad together, Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya and his intimate associates. And in the afternoon, so that the doors of the temple were closed while they were taking prasad so they could take prasad peacefully. When Prasadam was over, Lord Chaitanya said, open the doors. And as he opened the doors, the throngs of people came to see him. By the hundreds and by the thousands, all afternoon. And in the evening, Lord Chaitanya sat very peacefully and discussed Krishna Katha with his devotees. This was the last evening with Lord Chaitanya and his devotees before he traveled to South India. The next morning he took his morning bath and immediately set off by foot heading for his South India tour. And again, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes the devotees were weeping and pained. Lord Chaitanya ordered them, you stay, and just kept walking. He turned his back and didn't look back over his shoulder, just kept walking. Knowing what the feelings of the devotees were, but having another purpose, the determination of the renounced order of life, 
like that as it's described. Because he had a he had a mission. He had he had the affection for his loving devotees, but he had a, a purpose of appearing in this world that was to lip, bring the Yuga Dharma, the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And so he continued walking. He doesn't Krishna Das Kaviraj doesn't describe what the Lord's feelings were. Certainly determination, certainly he was feeling separation also. And he left. And as he was traveling, the next thing Krishna does, Kaviraj Goswami says, is he was constantly calling out Krishna's name. And the following song that Govind is going to sing, or at least attempt to sing, <laughs> without the harmonium. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. 
devotees that had, had accompanied Lord Chaitanya from Puri to Alalanath, they spent the next day pained in separation from Lord Chaitanya and at the end of the day they returned very sorrowful to Jagannath Puri just awaiting the Lord's fulfillment of his promise that he would return. Meanwhile, Lord Chaitanya in a mood like a mad lion was traveling along the, the, the road heading in a southerly direction. The roads were without people. He was raising his arms and calling out just as we heard and whenever he would see someone on the path he would stop, raise his arms and say, chant! Hari, Hari, just by seeing him in his ecstatic mood, they'd raise their arms and say, Hari, Hari, and chant Krishna's name. And he'd continue dancing and they would follow him. And after some time, Lord Chaitanya would embrace them and fill them with spiritual ecstasy in his mood of love of God and send them back to their village and tell them, tell all the people in your village to chant Krishna's holy name. And those persons maddened and intoxicated with Lord Chaitanya's love for Krishna went back to their village and everyone they saw, they told them, chant Krishna's name. And by experiencing the ecstatic mood of those persons who, they didn't hear any Bhagavad Gita classes and Bhagavatam classes and Mongol Artis and they were just filled with love of God and requesting everyone chant Krishna's name. And those that heard those speaking that way, they chanted Krishna's name and they went to their village and told people in this way, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, throughout the whole land, what I've just described Lord Chaitanya did all the way to South India and all the way back. And in this way, persons became Vaishnavas by chanting Krishna's name in ecstatic mood. Then he describes, do not have any failing of faith in these matters. <coughs> Meaning, in other words, it's, this isn't some exaggeration of what took place. This is what took place. Persons became filled with ecstatic love. Specifically, he says, even just seeing those persons, persons devote, they would, the individuals would become devotees. How powerful was Lord Titanya? There's one place where it's describing those who are on the topmost platform, the Kanishta, Madhyama and Uttama 
platform and those that are on the Uttama platform, just by seeing such persons, these individuals became very elevated Vaishnavas. And in course of time, through further Vaishnava association, they began to explain the teachings of Vaishnavism in a very dynamic way. Lord Chaitanya was spreading the Sankirtan movement and in this mood he came here to Kurmakshetra. The first place that's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Lord Chaitanya came to visit. Ah, something that I forgot to describe. When, when Lord, back in Alalanath, when Lord Nityananda saw all the people in the village, because this is the first time after Lord Chaitanya left Puri, he went to Alalanath and saw all the people, thousands, village people, chanting and dancing in ecstatic love of God. He made this prediction that this chanting of Krishna's holy name will be heard in every town and village all over the world by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. This I predict. So, very important message in our lives as devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By that prediction of Lord Nityananda, the, the, the path is clear. We just have to walk the path and make it manifest. So when he came to Kurmakshetra, he came before the deity, just as we did. Same temple, just as we came in, and saw the deity of Kurma. When he saw the deity of Kurma, he felt great ecstasy and love of God and began chanting and dancing before the deity. And um, after some time, again, a, a crowd of people came and um, Yeah. And amongst the crowd of persons that, that had assembled there was a devotee of this place whose name was also Kurma, who was a Brahmin. Kurma from Kurmakshetra. Mm -hmm. And Kurma invited Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come to his home for lunch. And he received Lord Chaitanya with great honor and washed his feet, sprinkled the water upon his own head and his family's head and drank the rest and was feeling ecstasy in, in honoring Lord Chaitanya. <clears throat> and they spent their time discussing <clears throat> topics about Krishna together. Um, then he made the Brahmana made the, the following request. Very important principle, so this is a, a, a take-home point. <laughs> so listen very carefully. Kurma, like the village people that Lord Chaitanya saw previously and wanted to travel with him, he requested Lord Chaitanya to travel with him. He was a very <coughs> respected member of the Brahmana community, he had a very wonderful family. He had his wealth. He had his home. He had a nice, happy life. He, he said, O oh my Lord, your lotus feet are meditated upon by Lord Brahma, and those very lotus feet have come into my home. There's no limit to my great fortune. It cannot be described. Today, my family, my birth, and my riches have all been glorified. Then he asked for some favor, a benediction. Please let me go with you. 
I can no longer tolerate the waves of misery caused by materialistic life. He was leading a very pious, religious life. But as long as one is um, involved in worldly affairs, as long as one has a material body and is involved in the events that are having to do with maintaining material existence, there's going to be difficulty. If things are going well, wait a while. Not too long. Some difficulty will arise. And we all have our experience. And when you're busy dealing with that difficulty, sooner than you know it, there's ten difficulties. And then it's like oppressive. What do I do? And you're feeling overwhelmed and some of them diminish and some of them just go away and then comes another wave and it's wave. Just looking around at the faces in the audience, I, knowing your lives, it's true. There's just... <laughs> <laughs> wave after wave. Even you're nicely situated. You have some wealth. You have a nice family. You have the things that people are supposed to have to be happy and something happens. And it's not just occasionally, it's like the ocean, it's just wave after wave after wave. Some of the waves are bigger, some of the waves are smaller, but it's wave after wave after, and some of them are just crushing, and then a few more crushing ones, and then it's gentler, but more waves, and. Wanting liberation, release from this materialistic life is the thought of a, or is the inspiration of a thoughtful person. Moksha. <clears throat> that was the intention of the Brahmana. Vishaya Tarange. Taranga means waves. Like Lord Ranganath is the Lord on the waves of the milk ocean. And Taranga, big waves. And Vishaya, we know what Vishaya means, sense gratification. Vishaya vinivartante niraharsha dehi nam. One wants sense enjoyment but instead of getting sense enjoyment you get the opposite when you try to give up the attraction for sense objects but the taste for those objects remains it's pretense so it doesn't work just by giving up materialistic life like it doesn't go away like that <laughs> not May wave a magic wand and material life just goes away. It doesn't go away. Tendencies remain. Even you remove things. Tendencies remain. But there's a method and that's deriving a higher taste. The higher taste of devotee association and the activities of devotional service. And that's what, Sar that's what Kurma Brahman wanted. Although materially well-to-do and religiously very pious, nice birth, nice family, nice, 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 waves of materialistic life. You get the picture. <laughs> In Prabhupada's purport, he explains, it's not possible to get a spiritual taste, a, a, a genuine spiritual happiness, as long as that hankering 
for material happiness remains. And it's like tar. How do you get tar off your hand? Well, take your other hand, and it's on both hands. What do you do? When you're once involved in materialistic life, once what has become embodied due to misuse of free will and is captured in a material body that has its impulses of desires and longings, even you may have the opportunity for the highest thing, the attachment for the lesser thing, the attachment for expecting material happiness in this temporary realm, will bar one from the real happiness. That's what Kurma Brahman wanted release from. He saw the opportunity was there in association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He felt a happiness in the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that demonstrated to him, proved to him, confirmed this material happiness I can do without. Let me just come and be with you. Lord Chaitanya's reply was, don't speak like that. Never say that again. Better to remain at home and chant the holy name of Krishna always. We're going to be discussing this this evening or this afternoon when we get back to Vishakapatnam. This very important principle that Lord Chaitanya expressed here to Kurma Brahman. But the very next verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita is one of our, like, banner verses of the whole of Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya spoke, Yadi Deka Tadi Kaha Krishna Upadesh, instruct everyone to follow the orders of Lord Sri Krishna as they are given in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada just inserted that. <laughs> Wherever you go, whoever you meet, express the message of Krishna to those persons. Stay in your position. Express the message of Krishna to others. In this way, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. This is just an amplification of what Lord Chaitanya, or a further delineation of what Lord Chaitanya said to all the persons who he met previous, and, he can, and, and successively spoke again, because Krishna Das Kaviraj is going to say, this exchange with Kurma is the same exchange that happened throughout the whole of Lord Chaitanya's travel in South India. It's the grain of rice in the pot of rice. It's the sample of Lord Chaitanya's instruction, very uniform instruction. Stay in your position. Don't speak of giving up your position because you're disturbed or frustrated by materialistic life. Rather, transform your life into spiritual life. And chant the holy name of the Lord always. And whoever you meet, wherever you go, express the message of Krishna to others. In this way, this is an order. It's not optional. In this way, become a spiritual master and liberate the land as much as within your power to do so. Lord Chaitanya then said, if you follow this instruction, your materialistic life at home will not obstruct your spiritual advancement. Indeed, if you follow these regulative principles, we will again meet here, or rather, you will never lose my company. They will always be in association with one another by 
remembering Lord Chaitanya's instruction and fulfilling Lord Chaitanya's instruction, there will be no separation. You don't need to travel with Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is saying, you don't need to travel with me. You just take this instruction because the essence is the chanting of Krishna's holy name. Finding happiness in the chanting of Krishna's holy name and carrying out the instructions of Lord Chaitanya. That's that higher taste. And when there's that higher taste, the lesser taste is not an obstruction because it's not where your consciousness is going. It's not what your sense of fulfillment or happiness is, is going. It's in this spiritual activity. It spiritualizes one's life. And the material aspects also become spiritualized and thus do not provide <coughs> obstruction. And Krishna Das Kaviraj expands that at, at wh whoever's house Lord Chaitanya had his meals and as being invited by them, they felt the same affinity for Lord Chaitanya. They wanted to be with him. They wanted to just travel with him and give up their worldly existence. And he instructed them again and again and again in the same manner. Lord Chaitanya spent the evening at Kurma Brahman's home and at the end of the night he performed his morning duties and he left. And Kurma followed him. <laughs> or at least tried to follow him. Lord Chaitanya, after allowing him to follow for some distance, he sent him back home. One can imagine he repeated his instructions. Follow my instructions and you'll be with me. Just after Lord Chaitanya left Kurma Brahman's home, another Brahman of the name Vasudev came very hurriedly to the home of Kurma in order to see Lord Chaitanya because he had heard that Lord Chaitanya was visiting Kurmakshetra and he was also a resident in Kurmakshetra. He had a very un unfortunate circumstance of life. We also have sometimes some unfortunate circumstances, but his was pretty severe. He had a case of leprosy that was so acute that his body was rotting. <clears throat> and where his body was rotting, <clears throat> there were worms. Some translations say maggots. You know, like when flesh is rotting and those creepy things just somehow appear. They had eaten into parts of his body and were living there in holes, maggot holes. And sometimes some of those worms would fall out of his body and he'd pick the worm up and put it back in the place that it fell out of. That was their home. Huh? That was Vasudev's compassion for other living entities. Not an exaggeration, that was just Vasudev's state. And <clears throat> he was so much hoping that he could get the association of Lord Chaitanya, but he heard that Lord Chaitanya had gone. And so he was weeping and crying and fell to the ground, crying and crying. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that Lord Chaitanya, being omniscient, he turned around and came back to Kurma Brahman's home. And when he saw Vasudev lying on the ground, weeping and crying in separation, in, in, in a, a lost opportunity to associate with him, Lord Chaitanya picked him up and embraced him because of Vasudev's love for Lord Chaitanya. And another miracle cure, just by touching the body of Vasudev, his body became completely wholesome again and of golden complexion and very beautiful luster. <coughs> Vasudev was 
stunned. He was cr crying another kind of tears. <laughs> Not just that his body had now been made well again. He didn't have to worry about the maggots falling out of his body. But that Lord Chaitanya had shown such mercy to him. He said, Who am I? A sinful, poor friend of a Brahmin. And who is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full in six opulences? Nonetheless, he has embraced me with his two arms. This is a verse, he was quoting a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. He was a learned scholar. It's a verse spoken by Sudama, when Sudama came to see Krishna. And as soon as Sudama came before Krishna, Krishna got off his throne and went and embraced Sudama. So Vasudeva is saying like this too. Oh, my merciful Lord, such mercy is not possible from ordinary living entities. Such mercy can only be found in you. Most people, just by seeing me, they go away at a distance because the bad odor, the smelly, corroded condition of my body, phew, they would just go away. But you have come and embraced me. Just see, this is the independent power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His tears now change to tears of ecstasy to have received Lord Chaitanya's association and his mercy. And then the next mood that Vasudeva had was he was concerned deeply concerned about becoming proud. I got miracle cured and I got Lord Chaitanya's mercy and he embraced me. I got mercy. He was concerned about that human frailty that most of us are subjected to. He didn't want to be subjected to that. Lord Chaitanya understood his mind, so he gave him some advice. Here's some advice for us, in case maybe some little pride comes in our heart sometimes. <laughs> if that happens, here's the advice. Constantly chant Hare Krishna. When you constantly chant Hare Krishna, by so doing, there'll be no room, no space, no possibility of pride entering the heart. Now, this is the reverse of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shikshastakam, that when you're in a humble state of mind, you can chant constantly. Try to chant constantly if you're not in a humble state of mind. You can't. So become humble Pride won't enter into the heart. Chant, and to protect yourself, chant constantly. He gave him some additional advice, just like he gave advice <clears throat> to Korma. He said, present the message of Krishna to others that you meet, and thus liberate others by that message of Krishna. As a result, very soon, Krishna will accept you as his devotee. After speaking like that to Vasudeva, Lord Chaitanya disappeared. doesn't say he continued on his journey, he just disappeared. And there were Kurma, the Brahman, and Vasudeva, the Brahman, their arms around each other's shoulders crying. <laughs> with Lord Chaitanya's amazing mercy. <coughs> this whole episode covers one chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, where here at Kurmakshetra, where we are, the very same Leela took place, where Lord Chaitanya gave very important instruction 
how someone who desires release from the waves of materialistic life can become lifted out of that circumstance, not just by leaving their circumstance, but by uplifting their consciousness, by taking Lord Chaitanya's instructions to heart. And Lord Chaitanya giving his special mercy to Vasudev. The chapter ends by saying that after this time, another name given to Lord Chaitanya or Gorhari was Vasudev Amrita Prada. He bestowed his nectar upon the Brahmana Vasudev. And with that, Lord Chaitanya left Kormakshetra, heading for the same place we're going this afternoon, Simachalam. That was his next stop on his South India tour. <coughs> We began by singing the Das Avatar Stotra. These are <coughs> well known songs from Gita Govinda by Jayadev Goswami, written in Jagannath Puri, in glorification of the forms of the Lord that appear as his Leela avatars, principal Leela avatars in the four yugas. So Kurma appeared in Satya Yuga and his appearance is described in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the whole Leela takes five chapters. So I'm just going to summarize. Shukadeva Goswami is discussing one of the, the ten topics of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Manus and the lineages of kings following the Manus. So prior to the eighth canto, he's covered, Shukadeva Goswami has covered the first three Manus. And the fourth Manu is the period of time when Gajendra appears. I'm sure you've noticed the paintings around the wall uh, of the temple. One of the Pujaris was giving us a little tour and we didn't have to point it out to him, he pointed it out to us. These are paintings from the BBT. <laughs> he said, Iskhan has done such a nice service in glorifying the Supreme Lord, we're just following. I, they had some other artists make the paintings, obviously. They're not just reprints from the BBT. But the Gajendra Moksha Leela is way over here on this side. And the Gajendra Moksha Leela took place during the fourth Manu, Tamasa Manu. And following Tamasa Manu was Raivata Manu. Raivata was the brother of Tamasa Manu and he, he became the fifth Manu. Very quickly he covers the fifth Manu and goes on to the sixth Manu. Sixth Manu is just before our present Manu. Vaivasvata Manu is our present Manu. So Chakshusha Manu. During the reign of Chakshusha Manu, one of the forms of the Lord appeared as Ajita. And um, his mother and father's name are identified and